Hi all, welcome back to Edgimendo. In this video, let's discuss a previous year university question. The question is to design a recursive descent parser for a given grammar. And this was a question in May 2019, KTU question paper. Okay. So what we have to do? First, we have to analyze whether the given grammar contains any left recursion. If there is any left recursion, first we have to eliminate the left recursion. I hope you all know how to eliminate left recursion. If you don't know how to eliminate left recursion, please watch my previous videos on left recursion. So now let's move on to the solution. So first step is to eliminate left recursion. So the production E produces E plus T bar T will become E produces T E dash and E dash produces plus T E dash bar epsilon. Similarly, the second production T produces T star F bar F that also contains a left recursion, right? Because the LHS is T and the RHS starts with T, just like the first production. In the first production also, the LHS was E and the RHS starts with E. So, it was also a left recursion, right? Similarly, second production is also left recursive production. So, we have to convert it to T produces F T dash and T dash produces star F T dash bar epsilon. Finally, the last production F produces opening parenthesis E closing parenthesis bar ID. In this production, we can see that there is no left recursion. The left hand side is F and none of the terms in right hand side starts with F. So, there is no left recursion there. So, that production we can write as it is. So, this is our grammar which is free from left recursion. And now we have to design the recursive descent parser for this grammar. Okay. So, what's the aim? Actually, we have to write the algorithm. Algorithm on how to evaluate this grammar using a recursive descent parser. So, what we have to do? We have to look at our chart symbol E. So, first we have to write the procedure for E. The procedures we will be writing like this, okay. This means that it is a procedure for E. When we write like this, this is the procedure for T, okay. And this E dash, E dash means we will be writing it as E prime, okay. E prime. So, the procedure for E dash will be E prime function. And remember one thing, we will be calling these procedures only for the variables or only for the non-terminals. When we see these terminals, star, plus, uh, id, all these are terminals, right? Similarly, the opening parenthesis, closing parenthesis, all these are terminals. When we see these terminals, we won't call any function. We will just forward our input. So, let's move on to our solution. Like I said before, first we have to call the procedure for e because e is our starting symbol. So, first write the procedure for e. And what we have to do? Here E produces T E dash, right? So, in the procedure for E, first we have to call the procedure for T. Then we have to call the procedure for E dash. E dash means the procedure is E prime. So, for the production E produces T E dash, we have to call the procedure for T first. Then we have to call the procedure for E prime. So, we can write it as First, we have to call the procedure for T. Then, we have to call the procedure for E prime. And that's all. That's the only thing we have to do for the symbol E. So, we can close a procedure of the symbol E. Now, what we have to do? We have to write the procedure for T. Here, we have written that when we call the procedure for E, first, we have to do the procedure for T. Then, we have to do the procedure for E prime, right? So, what's the procedure for T and E prime? So, we have to write that next. We have to write the procedure for T. Then, we have to write the procedure for E prime. So, what's the procedure for T? For that, we have to look at T production. The production for T is T produces F T dash, right? So, when we call the procedure for T, what we have to do? We have to first call the function or the procedure for F. Then, we have to call the function of procedure for T dash. T dash means T prime. Okay, so in the procedure T, we have to write procedure F, then procedure T prime. 
So we can write it as procedure for T as procedure F then T prime. And that's all for the symbol T. T produces F T dash. That's the only thing that we have to do for T. So we can close that procedure for T. Now what we have to do? We have written the procedure for T. Now we have to write the procedure for E prime, right? So the procedure for E prime is what we have to do? We have to look the production for E prime. E prime means there are two productions. E prime means plus T E dash bar epsilon. Okay. So the first term or the first production for E dash or the E prime starts with plus, right? Till now we have seen that those productions, E production as well as T production, they contain only the variables. But here in E dash, we can see that plus is a terminal. It's not a variable, it's a terminal. So whenever we see a terminal, we have to scan the next input. That means when the input is plus, we have to increment the input that is input plus plus and then we have to call the function for t and then we have to call the function for e dash or e prime. So how we can write it? We can write it like if our input input is equal to plus only if the input is equal to plus so first we have to increment the input input plus plus and then we have to call the procedure for t and then we have to call the procedure for e prime. Okay, is that finished now? Let's look plus t e dash. That term is finished, right? But we can see that there is an epsilon here. Okay, that means for e dash, there is not only one term here, there are two terms. So if the input is plus, we have to do this or else we have to take epsilon. Okay, so else, else. It's epsilon, right? Epsilon means we don't have to do anything. So we can just return. So that's all for the E prime function. And now what we have to do? We have completed the procedure for T, the procedure for E prime. And now we have to write the procedure for F. Okay. So what's the procedure for F? Here also in F there are two terms. So the first term is opening bracket, variable E, then closing bracket, right? So we have to check if the input is opening bracket, then we have to increment the input. Then what comes? It's a variable, right? So we have to call the procedure for E and then there comes the terminal closing parenthesis, right? So we have to check if the input is closing parenthesis and if it's a closing parenthesis, what we have to do? We have to just increment the input. So we can write the procedure for F. We have to check if the input is, is equal to opening parenthesis. But if it's opening parenthesis, we have to increment the input, input plus plus. And then we have to call the E function or the E procedure. And again, we have to check if the input is closing parenthesis. If input equal to equal to closing parenthesis. And what if it's closing parenthesis? We have to just increment the input. And that's all for the first production. And what's the second production for F? Second production for F is F produces ID. So, this is the first production and the second production is else. In else what we have to do? There is only one terminal, right? ID. So, we have to check if input equal to equal to ID. If the input is ID, we can just increment the input, input plus plus. And that's all for the procedure for F. So, now we can see that we have completed the procedure for E the procedure for E prime, the procedure for T as well as the procedure for F. Now we have left out the procedure for T dash, right? That means T prime. So what's the procedure for T prime? In T prime, there are two productions. So first one starts with star. So we have to check if the input is star and if the input is star, what we have to do? We have to increment the input and then we can call the function for F and after that we can call the function for T prime. This is the first part. And what about the else part? In else part, it is just epsilon only. So in else part, we don't have to do anything. We can just return from the function. So we can write the procedure for T dash. I'll write here in the next page. T prime. In T prime, first we have to check if the input is star. If input equal to equal to star, we have to first increment the input. Input plus plus. 
and then we have to call the procedure for f and after that we have to call the procedure for t prime so that's all for the first procedure and the second procedure for t prime was epsilon right so we can write that in else part we can just return nothing we have to do it's just else only so we can return from our procedure so now we can see that we have returned the procedure for all the variables okay so this is how you design a recursive descent parser for a given grammar so what you have to do you have to write the procedure for all the variables or all the non terminals that means the capital letters so for each procedure you have to check what is on the right hand side if there is more than one term in the right hand side then you have to write it as if else portions okay and whenever you see a variable on right hand side you have to call the procedure for that variable and if you are seeing a terminal then what do you have to do you have to check if the input is equal to that terminal and if the input is equal you can just increment the input okay so that's all about designing the recursive descent parser hope you have understood it if you have any doubt you can put it down in the comment section okay thank you